I have always hated Babylon Bee, and in this video, I'm going to tell you why I think this website is trash. I'm Katav, and this is Fermanutics. If you've never heard of Babylon Bee, it's a satirical website that aims to be something like the Christian version of The Onion. It doesn't report actual news or feature op-eds, but rather has exaggerated and absurd headlines paired with images and articles that illustrate the humorous point the author is making. The problem is that the flavor of Christianity that Babylon Bee offers is extremely right-wing anti-feminist, anti-socialist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, etc. It's, uh, not great. First, some background. Babylon Bee was founded by Adam Ford in 2016. Ford is best known for his conservative Christian webcomic at adamford.com. Get it? Adam Ford D. Adam Ford. Anyway. Ford's comic looks suspiciously like the popular webcomic The Oatmeal, except with conservative evangelical theological and political jokes instead of any actually humorous material. In 2018, Ford sold Babylon Bee to a businessman named Seth Dillon, who is still the CEO today. The head writer of the website is a guy named Kyle Mann, who wants you to know he's terrified about the thought of his kid being queer. Apparently, Babylon Bee has faced some controversy from people who thought it was deceiving people by pretending to report real news, which led to some fact checks from Snopes and CNN. Here's CEO Seth Dillon doing an interview with Fox News host and noted fascist Tucker Carlson, in which he remarks on the supposed irony of CNN, widely derided by conservatives as a source of fake news, calling out Babylon Bee for its falsities. So as I comment on this website, I want to be completely clear that I understand that the site is meant to be satirical. I literally don't care what CNN or anyone else said about the site, and my critique has nothing to do with the truth value of the headlines or articles here. I just think their satire is mostly bad and stupid and terrible. Now, not everything on Babylon Bee is a dumpster fire. I've occasionally had a funny headline or two shared with me by a friend. I'll chuckle with you about Baptist's fear of, but secret consumption of alcohol. Heaven accidentally sending out a mobile notification about the rapture or someone putting their last and therefore most treasured roll of toilet paper in the offering basket at church. I also think that some of Babylon Bee's satire of Democrats is funny, if not always for the right reasons. This headline, for instance, rightfully highlights how Democratic politicians pay lip service to Black activist demands while they're running for office, but then do little to meet those demands when they get elected. You'll notice that many of the recent protests that have been taking place across the U.S. are protests against the policies of Democratic mayors and city councils. Democrats absolutely need to do better on race. This article portrays presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden as a creep, which, yeah, considering his well-documented weird behavior around women, and the credible rape allegation against him, I'm inclined to agree. Ew. Some of Babylon B's critiques of Christians themselves are also good. Here, a professed Christian is satirized for acting hypocritically as he ignores an impoverished person right next to him. It's true that people who claim the label Christian have been intimately involved at both personal and institutional levels in any number of terrible social ills. Finally, this headline doesn't even know how good it is. I am unironically in favor of replacing a cop character in a kid's show with an anti-fascist activist. All cops are bastards, and that includes that Paw Patrol police dog, and Nick Wilde, and Judy Hopps, and... All too often, however, Babylon Bee sets aside any effort toward insightful commentary and instead punches down at political enemies and marginalized groups. 
For example, a woman who might be justifiably upset at the Bible's patriarchal influences is ridiculed for critiquing God-splaining. And Babylon Bee finds it hilarious that a feminist might laugh. As we all know, feminists are really just interested in complaining and spoiling other people's fun. Not, you know, posing legitimate challenges to a society that has historically disenfranchised and oppressed them and continues to do so in various ways. If you're a socialist, Babylon B hates you too, thinking you're too sensitive, or your desire to provide adequate health care to people or allow them to organize their workplace just amounts to failed policies. Or your leftist or liberationist reading of religious text is misinformed. Babylon B thinks lesbian representation in popular media is worth making fun of, and that a gay man can't know anything about the Bible, which, uh, I'm a gay biblical scholar, so that's news to me. The website's definition of loving queer people apparently involves telling them they're going to hell. But don't worry, when they say homosexuality is wrong and sinful, it's just a disagreement. They don't actually hate gay people. Babylon B thinks trans women are just men in purple wigs. And the very thought of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences acknowledging the value of trans people is laughable to them. And anyone who does want to respect trans people's dignity is denying science and can't be trusted on other issues like climate change. Babylon B also thinks it's weird that progressives don't approve of depictions of people of color that stem from slavery or Jim Crow era ideals or European settler colonialism in the Americas. Progressives are overly sensitive and just want to lecture everyone, including God, for their privilege. And then there's this one, which is certainly racist, but doesn't actually make any sense. Like, what's the joke here? Some shitty thing about fried chicken? Or is Chick-fil-A finally kowtowing to the allegedly domineering demands of black activists? What does this even mean? Oh, apparently it's making fun of Chick-fil-A CEO Dan Cathy's bumbling and ignorant attempts to acknowledge his white privilege. You know your satire is good when you have to explain it in a subsequent tweet. Incidentally, Chick-fil-A and queer people's critiques of their conservative politics are an incredibly frequent topic on Babylon Bee. Like, look at the mileage they're getting from a chicken sandwich fast food restaurant. Truly, the biting commentary that we need in these trying times. Now, all of these headlines are right-wing drivel, and I could spend a whole video unpacking why each one is bad. But one recent article in particular, one that mentions the Bible, caught my eye, and since this is a Biblical Studies channel, I figured I should talk about it. Behold, New Social Justice Study Bible replaces all mentions of sin with systemic oppression. If the subtext of this joke is unfamiliar to you, you should be aware that many progressive Christians have sought to diminish the church's focus on individual personal sins, like lying, stealing, masturbating, whatever, and instead increase the church's focus on systemic or societal sins, like racist government policies, mass incarceration, police brutality, and impoverishment under capitalism. For these progressive Christians, this takes the pressure off of individuals who are otherwise expected to live perfect, faithful lives and shifts their attention to the world around them, hopefully empowering them to make a positive difference in the world. And just to lay my cards on the table, I am a Christian, and for me personally, if you're going to do Christianity at all, I am strongly in favor of an approach that counters systemic evils. It's much more compelling for me if God is concerned about whether my neighbors have health care or enough food to eat, not whether I've looked at furry porn lately. This article, then, is making fun of these progressive Christians for worrying too much about this thing called systemic oppression. Conservative evangelicals, like this Babylon Bee writer, might acknowledge that some of these bad things do exist in the world, 
but they would argue that these problems should be fixed at an individual level, specifically through forgiveness of one's own personal sins, through Jesus or something. White supremacy might exist, conservatives would say, but it can only be eliminated by believing in Jesus. This, of course, ignores the vast quantity of evidence that believers in Jesus have historically been some of the most oppressive people. The Crusades, the Inquisition, African enslavement, European settler colonialism, etc. Like, believing in Jesus has never been a marker of being a good person or contributing to the good of all. Fixing one's own personal sin isn't going to fix systemic racism or anything else. And let's take a moment to recognize how awful this headline sounds right this moment. This video is coming out in June of 2020, a time in which for weeks on end, Black Lives Matter activists have risked their lives during the coronavirus pandemic to march in the streets to protest police brutality and white supremacy. These calls to defund and abolish the police have been met with intense police resistance, with cops beating people, shooting them with rubber bullets, and using chemical weapons like tear gas against them, which is actually a war crime if you didn't know. This article came out Wednesday, June 17th. It must have been a slow news day if Babylon Bee found time to complain about this. Let's see what was going on that day. Coronavirus cases continued to rise in the U.S., putting especially vulnerable populations like the incarcerated and the elderly at greatest risk. Despite the pandemic, however, President Trump was making plans for a rally that would involve gathering thousands of people in an enclosed space. Reports of black people found hanged to death appeared in parts of the U.S., universally attributed to suicide by authorities, but suspected to be lynchings by others. These alarming cases caused some to question whether other alleged suicides were indeed lynchings. In the midst of all this, protests against the killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Rayshard Brooks, and untold other names continued across the country, in response to which Trump issued an executive order that can charitably be called weak and ineffective. One police chief thankfully faced consequences for tear-gassing citizens, but protesters themselves continued to suffer from police brutality. This is just one day's worth of news in just the U.S., and not even close to all of it. In the midst of a historic virus outbreak and protests in all 50 states, Babylon Bee feels it necessary to poke fun at progressives who rightly oppose the systemic oppression that these headlines reveal. Anti-blackness, capitalism, poverty, and disease are killing the world, and Babylon Bee is making fun of us for whining about it. Like seriously, fuck off. Fuck all the way off. One other point about this article. As we saw, the joke here is that progressive Christians want to replace the word sin in the Bible with systemic oppression. One ostensibly humorous example is a proposed verse that reads, for the wages of systemic oppression is death, or at least getting canceled. God, I hate this so much. This is a span on Romans 6.23, which the New Revised Standard Version renders in full as this. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The way a conservative evangelical might read this is that one's own personal sins result in death, but Jesus provides life. In its original context, the writer Paul very likely didn't mean to refer to sin as one's personal, individual instances of misbehavior. Recent scholarship has begun to notice that in his letter to the Romans, Paul uses the word sin as if it's something of a cosmic force. In Romans, sin is the subject of many verbs. It acts, it does things, it comes in and enslaves people, it takes over. And in Paul's logic, Jesus is the one who can set people free from this force of evil. In short, for Paul here, sin doesn't refer to the discreet, wrongful actions that a person might do. Instead, sin is a power, a force that stands opposed to God in a cosmic war. 
If you want to know more, I've provided a reference to an article that explains this view, as well as a link to an episode of the New Testament Review podcast that discusses this. New Testament Review is a great podcast in general, so give them a listen. So what does this mean? Well, ironically, Babylon B's ignorant joke about progressive readings of the Bible actually, in a sense, improves the usual translation of Romans 6.23. Because modern readers will often read sin as individual actions here, replacing it with systemic oppression actually probably helps us understand Paul's original meaning better. Sin here is bigger than personal choices. It's not about the little things you do that make God mad. Sin here is a huge force that is opposed to life itself, and it consumes people's lives even when they're good-intentioned and well-behaved. Sin can't be confronted by personal improvements or self-help. It's a supernatural power that our individual decisions have no effect on. So in some sense, sin really is something like systemic oppression. Now, I'll be quick to note that Paul was obviously not working with the same frameworks that you and I think with. So he, of course, does not mean systemic oppression precisely. In addition, his solution to this cosmic force of evil is Jesus. But I would argue that people of any religion and no religion should be involved in movements for justice. So he and I certainly disagree about how to face this problem. But in spite of all this, Babylon B's conservative satire is somehow, despite itself, a little bit insightful here about the scope of the problem Paul was identifying. Where do we go with all this? First, just stop paying attention to terrible websites like Babylon B, and please get your satire from someone who actually cares about humanity and the world. Second, I want to go back to the beginning and highlight what Adam Ford said about founding the website in the first place. In an interview with Christianity Today, the interviewer asks him about evangelicals' typical dis-ease with satire. In explaining the utility of satire, Ford responds, it's important to look at what we're doing, to examine ourselves. This is, of course, good advice, but it rings pretty hollow coming from him. Are these articles from Babylon B good examples of self-examination? How closely are these writers looking at themselves if they're willing to publish racist, sexist, transphobic, and queerphobic articles? What good is your satire if you're only punching down at people who are already oppressed? We can do so much better than this. All right, that's as much time as I care to spend on this bad website. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, hit the subscribe button, and share it with your friends. Happy Pride! Wear a mask when you go to a protest or anywhere else. And Black Lives Matter. Thanks for watching.